what is Active Directory? In this lecture, I will go over key concepts of Active Directory so that you would understand how it works. Active Directory, also known as AD, was introduced in Windows Server 2000, but it was in use since December 15, 1999 when it was released to manufacturing. In this lesson, I will go over an overview of Windows Active Directory key terminologies and relationships. It is important that you understand these key concepts before you start working with AD. This lesson is not only intended for beginner sysadmins who wants to learn about Active Directory structures, key terminologies and configurations, but also for more experienced administrators. This video lecture covers basics of AD, but I will not go into depth of complex concepts associated with how AD, GPOs, etc, etc. So this is going to be an overall um, explanation of how Active Directory works. What is inside an AD? So we need to understand what is a domain controller, especially when we are working with Windows servers. So many components to Active Directory domain services, also known as ADDS, um, are associated with your domain controller. So domain controller is uh, a basically a server in which handle your domain. So Windows servers are basically act like domain controllers once it's properly configured and installed. So if you want to know how to configure a domain controller or install the domain, I already have posted videos on my YouTube channel. You can go and check it out. Domain controllers, the ADDS database and syswall are key components that work together to make this administration of networks devices or network connected devices work. So basically domain controllers are a way to control your network devices. Domain controllers also known as DC is the heart of the Active Directory. All Active Directories are connected to a domain controller and the domain controller and Active Directory work in tandem or together to administer networking devices. What I mean by administer networking devices is you can control who has access to your networking devices and how those devices are used, etc, uh, etc. Et so basically, Active Directory and domain controllers are used to administer hundreds of if not thousands of networking components within a network. Active Directory cannot be installed without a domain controller. In other words, you need to have a domain controller in order for you to have an active directory and that's how, uh, you know, the component work together. Active directory, uh, it has been around uh, since Windows NT 3.1, which was originally introduced by the uh, Microsoft as Microsoft domain. So that's how the domain controller first started actually. Um, so it's not really Active Directory at that point. It is just a domain controller, but it has some components that are similar to what we use in Active Directory. Then with Windows Server 2000, which I mentioned before, we had the Active Directory introduced as a separate unit uh, that would do this, uh, you know, delegation and control of networking devices. Windows Server 2003 introduced new features, key new features, and Windows Server 2003 R2 introduced Active Directory Federation Services, also known as ADFS, and Active Directory Application Mode, also known as AD, uh, ADAM or A ADAM. I'm not going to go into depth of what ADFS and what AD, uh, sorry, ADAM. Uh, these are, I will cover in a separate video. For now, just know the progression of Active Directory. So you can pause this video and look at how, you know, it went from Windows Server 2000 introducing Active Directory all the way to 2012, where um, the, it focused on in increasing the security enhancement on this slide. System volume, also known as SysVolve, is a key component of your Active Directory. It is a special directory on each of your domain controller and it contains several shared folders known as syswall shares. 
default location for all Windows Server syswall is this particular location. So you can actually go uh, Windows, uh, you know, run command, and then you can type percentage system root percentage syswall and uh, you know slash syswall, and this will get you to that location. Components of syswall include folders and junction points. So those are key two components of syswall. Folders store group policy templates, also known as GPTs, and basically replicated as uh, you know uh, syswall containers, also known as GPCs, and it's replicated via Active Directory replication process. Folders also contain scripts, especially startup scripts that are referenced in a GPO, also known as group policy object, or startup script in uh, Active Directory user profile. So it can pull startup script for uh, either GPO uh, or through the Active Directory uh, user profile by saving those startup script inside the syswall folders. What are GPOs? What are AD user profiles? I will explain that in next few slides. Just keep in mind what the folders are used for. Junction points are similar to that of Windows shortcuts. So it's just like creating a shortcut on your uh, typical Windows machine, except this is specifically for Active Directory and Domain Controller. The junction points act like a shortcut for that kind of configuration. So one directory can point to a different directory in, with, using junction points in File Explorer if you try to browse junction points, all those junction points uh, and directory looks and feel the, exactly the same. So in File Explorer for human, it probably not gonna make a big difference. You can look at all the junction points even on your desktop computer uh, that is not connected to a domain controller or Active Directory by simply going into command prompt and typing dir slash al slash s command and that will show you all the junction points available on your device. So why use Active Directory at the first place? So Active Directory basically have users and computers. Users contain all the people who will be using your network or network connected devices. And computers basically encompass all the devices connected to your uh, domain or Active Directory. So basically computers includes not only computers or end devices, but also other, maybe other uh, servers, uh, printers, any network connected devices can be put together as under the umbrella of computers. So this is why when you go to a Windows Server, for example, Windows Server 2022, you will see a section called Active Directory Users and Computers. Active Directory Users and Computers, as its name implies, is a live database. That's where the active part of the name come from. It is active, it's a live database of users and the network connected components, typically known as, we, we denote as computers, right? So. The reason why it is active, because it's a live database. So it, you, as a system administrator, you can uh, change configurations within an Active Directory while it is in the production environment. You don't have to shut down the entire server for most of the uh, configuration changes. There are some configuration changes that you have to reboot or shut down your server where your users will lose connection to the uh, your Active Directory, but majority of the time, 97, 95% of the time, the changes you make to your database is live. So that's what make it an Active Directory. It is also Active Directory, it is active because the users also get live updates to certain configurations through group policy updates, for example. So GP updates uh, can push configurations to your users through the Active Directory. That's why we call it Active Directory. It allows system administrators to manage users uh, via user accounts, computers, printers, and network resources. Um, and you, it allows you to control um, you know, file and folder access permissions. So who get access to what? For example, we can actually 
uh, say this user is only allowed to print to this particular network printer but no other network printers. You can also tell this network printer is belong to this particular organizational unit which is I will explain what they are later and but other, other uh, users uh, who are not in, within that organizational unit cannot print to that uh, net, uh, you know, uh, so the, uh, that uh, you know, printer, for example. You can also apply different security rules and policies to different users and computers using security groups, also known as groups and organizational units, which I will go over in next few slides. It is important that you understand the relationships between Active Directory components because without this proper understanding as a system administrator, you might mess something up, especially for your large organizations. You need to understand the key relationships between Active Directory components. So let's look at AD relationships. So first we have to understand what is an Active Directory. So Active Directory allows security, authentication and authorization. So it allows you to manage network resources from a one single point of view or centralized point of view. So as a system administrator, instead of going into each individual end device, so in computer, for example, computers or printers and configure how the it should interact with your network and who should have access to those computers and those devices you can do all of that using the active directory so it allows security authentication and authorization from a central po uh, po uh, point and allow easy management of network resources under active directory we have certain key terminologies that you need to understand those include things like security groups often system administrators name them as just groups which allow assignment of specific security policies and access controls to subset of users within your designated groups in other words what it's going to do if you have let's say thousand users and 20 of them are management uh, people and rest are employees you can create two security groups called employee group and management group or another example would be let's say you have 100 users and you can create a couple of security groups to allow different access to different folders so for example if the creative group want to have access to creative folder but you want to block them from accessing any other folders you can create a security group and attach all your creative users to that group and then then use that group and attach that group to a that particular folder allowing those creative group to access that then you can create another folder called management and you put all the management files in there and you can create a security group called management security group and then assign all the users to that group allowing management uh, group users to access that management folder but nothing else or you can give management users both create creators a group access and the management group access by simply adding both security groups the creator security group and the management security group to the management users so basically what it doing is it is segmenting users or also known as subsetting the users putting users in different subset groups and then instead of applying security policies to individual users, we are now applying security policies based on the groups in which the users belong. So that's what the security group does. Organizational unit, on the other hand, also known as OUs, holds users, groups, and computers, just like a security group, but except the organizational units also allow you to apply group policy settings or account permissions to that particular unit. So you cannot apply group policy settings to a security groups. If you want to apply a group policy setting, you basically have to apply to the organizational unit. So once you are get used to using Windows Server, you will understand how security groups are different from organizational unit but for now what you the key concept you need to understand somebody who is new to system administration is that 
Organizational unit, also known as OU, is the smallest unit in which you can apply group policy settings or account permissions. So what is group policy settings at the first place? Well, group policy, also known as GP, is a hierarchical infrastructure that allows a administrator in charge of Microsoft Active Directory to implement specific configurations for users and computers. So it allows to, uh, you to centralize the management of your users and computers. And the group policy can actually be localized as well. You, you can have group policies on a local computer without connected to a Active Directory. But in this particular lesson, what we are focusing on group policies that are specifically connected to a domain controller or Active Directory. So it allow group policies allow you to apply uh, administration uh, rules uh, to your users and computers from a centralized point. Basically, group policies are all virtual and a collection of those group policies create a thing called, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, key terminology called group policy object, also known as GPO. So GPO is a virtual collection of group policies. So instead of one group policy, if you have like 10, 11, 12 group policies and all of those group policies together, we can create a group policy object. Again, it may be a little bit confusing to you, but I will give you an example right now to just to clear some confusion here. So let's say you want to change the login screen to a group of people that is belong to a specific organizational unit. So you have organizational unit for finance and you have organizational unit for IT and you have organizational unit for management and et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to change the logging screen, let's say there's a security breach and you want to let the IT people know, you can apply a logging screen image to the IT organizational unit saying, hey, before you log in, please contact this 1-800 number or something like that. Or you can change the entire image of that. Or you can give them uh, a warning, for example, that is applied to the organizational unit of IT group. So basically, the organizational unit IT will have a group policy applied so that whatever the changes you make within that group policy attached to the organizational unit of IT will only appear for the IT organizational group and all the users within them. So I know this is a little bit confusing right now, but as we go through this lesson, as well as when you watch my previous videos that already has been posted to my YouTube channel, you will understand what the, the group policy actually means. So for now, just understand what is Active Directory, security groups, organizational units, and group policies from a technical point of view. And finally, the concept of scope. So in Windows Active Directory, the scope defines where the user or computer object resides within the Active Directory hierarchy. Because remember, Active Directory is a type of a hierarchical system. So the scope will define where your users and computer objects are going to reside within the Active Directory hierarchy. So depending on where the computer or user is, uh, maybe certain group policies are applied to that user or computer, certain organizational units uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, that user or computer is part of the certain organizational units and et cetera, et cetera. So that's what the scope basically define. So if you look at Active Directory uh, relationships uh, in a diagram, when it's come to point a domain controller, Windows domain controller, you will have the domain, organizational units, group policies, objects, group policies, child organizational units, devices or users, in other words, computers and printers, etc., etc., and the user accounts, and security groups. So how they interact with each other, you can kind of view it like this way. So the group policy can be applied to either to a domain or organizational unit. And the group policy objects that are applied to the domains or organizational unit 
can be a combination of multiple group policies because multiple group policies create a group, a group policy object. And then the organizational units will can or may have child organizational units or may not have any child organizational unit. And at the end of the day, you will have all your users and devices under a OU or a child OUs. And then we can use the security groups to apply more minute control over those users and devices. For example, like folder access example that I gave you previously, basically the security groups can be used to control which users have access to what folders and what devices each of these users can have access to. For example, if you have a printer that you need to separate uh, from other users and or delegate to some other, you know, control who has the control over that printer, you can do that using security groups. So this is a, like a brief overview chart of how a domain controller work. Like for example, in my previous videos, we have a local domain called sanuja.local. So that is basically the domain controller. Then we have organizational unit called NetIT Geeks. Then we had the child organizational unit called the content creation. And underneath, remember, we use we have a group called sec, a security group called managers. So it's basically a hierarchical system. This diagram is a little bit confusing. I will explain that in my next slide because the organizational unit applied GPOs, GPOs in other words, GPOs applied to the organizational units take precedence over the GPOs applied to the domain uh, itself. So keep that in mind uh, when we move forward. So I will explain that in the next few slides as well. But for now, uh, basic structure of how uh, you know, the AD relationships work is uh, this is how it basically works. So the users get impacted by all of these things coming down the pipe and including the security groups when you have a domain controller. But remember, earlier I explained that Active Directory policies uh, are applied to the do uh, through the domain controller, but the GPs or group policies or GPOs, the group policy objects, can be applied locally without a domain controller. So basically, if you go to your computer, your desktop computer at home that is not connected to Active Directory or a domain, you will still have, uh, you know, group policies, uh, group policy objects, and then you have your device and then which is your computer and then user would be you or if you have multiple accounts you will have multiple user accounts so in terms of gpos or group policies they do exist in the local level as well what makes active directory different is that the active directory like i mentioned before is active on a domain controller where you as an administrator can administer these group policies or group policy objects to multiple hundreds of thousands of users from a centralized location. So keep that in mind. So the domain controller type of uh, act, uh, you know uh, type of group policies are typically associated with an Active Directory, and this is how it interact with each other. But even your local computers do have group policies and group policy objects. It just doesn't have that Active Directory component. It cannot be, you know, a, 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 an organizational uh, administrator cannot control your local computer unless your local computer is connected to the domain controller and the Active Directory. So keep that in mind. You can pause this video right here if you want to have a uh, quick look at these two diagrams. These are very important concepts that you understand. Again, group policy objects can be applied to both domain or to the uh, organizational unit. And then through that, you can control your child or use, users, devices, and then you can control users, devices, access policies also through security groups. But on your local computer, you also could have group policies, group policy objects, but it doesn't have that active part or active directory part. So this is how they interact with each other. So remember on my previous slide, I mentioned the diagram is a little bit confusing uh, because on my previous slide, as you can see, the domain is at the very top, but the group policy can be applied to both domain or OU. But GPOs linked to OU have more precedence 
most precedence compared to GPUs linked to domain, GPUs linked to site, and GPUs uh, linked to group policy, local group policy. Remember the group, local group policy is the one that is within your computer itself is a standalone policy. So the GPUs can be linked to domains and or use in the same way that they can be linked to sites. The default domain policy is linked to each domain by default. So the default domain policy is something that comes with all Windows Active Directory installations and it is directly linked to your Windows domain. The GPUs linked to organizational units, in other words, or you have the highest precedence followed by uh, those linked to domains. And then the GPUs links to sites always take the least precedence when it applies uh, in that, uh, you know, in, in those, um, you know, different units. So if you apply a GPO to the OU, and then you apply another GPO to domain, and you apply another GPO to site, and etc., etc., the GPO that is applied to the OU take precedence over everything else. So if there is a GPO that is same applied to here and here, but differently, for example, you have a login screen image differently, apply to here and here, whatever apply here, take precedence. The GPO linked to the OU take over whatever the similar GPO, same GPO with different configurations apply to the domain and site, etc., etc. So keep that in mind. The GPOs linked to organizational units have the highest precedence followed by the other, you know, other unit that comes after it. So we will go over quickly uh, Active Directory uh, services technologies. Again, this is a brief overview. I will not, I will not go into depth uh, of any of these things, but brief overview of this. So Active Directory services include Active Directory domain services, also known as ADDS, which I have extensively covered on my YouTube channel. And in the future, I will also cover more uh, in depth into that. But we also have Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, also known as ADLDS. ADLDS is a lightweight developer-friendly directory that can be deployed on a client computer and client operating system, as well as on a server. And I'm not gonna cover in depth into what, how it works and how it differs from ADDS, but know that they exist. The other one called the Active Directory Federation Services, ADFS, E, which is a um, claims-based identity solution that helps independent organization connect their directory services technologies together to facilitate a single sign-on and cross-organizational resource access. Again, it is a fairly common uh, solution implemented in modern technologies and it is also part of the cloud services provided to you by Microsoft such as Microsoft Azure but uh, I will not go into depth of what is ADFS uh, right now but just know they exist other services or roles included within uh, the about three the ADDS ADLDS and ADFS includes the Active Directory Certificate Services also known as ADCS Active Directory Rights Management Services although also known as ADRMS and Microsoft uh, Forefront Identity Manager also known as FIM again I'm not going to go into depth of those things just know those things exist the administration of Active Directory, uh, when it's come to that, there are a few tools and uh, methods uh, that we use to manage uh, Active Directory. The Active Directory users and computers, also known as ADUC, is a Microsoft Management Council, also known as MMC Snapping, that is available to you through especially uh, on Windows Server, uh, you know, uh, the main console, um, uh, you can see that on the top, uh, top uh, right hand menu. Directory objects such as users, computers, and organizational units uh, are contained within that. Domain operations, in other words, race domain functional levels, transfer RID, primary domain controller emulators, uh, and, uh, you know, infrastructure, flexible single master operations, etc., etc., which I'm not going to go into depth, but just know the, those key components. What is involving managing these objects uh, as a system administrator, especially if you are new to Active Directory domain controllers, include setting initial passwords uh, for users and devices, 
resetting passwords for users and devices, adding or removing users to security groups, which is a big part of my job as an IT analyst, and managing permissions for users and devices. That's another big part you will, uh, will do as an uh, IT analyst, uh, and moving computer objects between organizational units. And that's everything for today. In my future video, I will go over a practical demonstrations of the key concept that we have covered in this particular lesson. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. If you like these type of videos, please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, thank you so much and have a nice day.